The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. USA. Kia ora Queens and welcome to the finale of The Real Pod, Rubles Drag Race Down Under the Covers with... with- the male gaze, colon, or semicolon. Semicolon, I believe. Chris, Chris Parker, Parker and Eli, Eli Matthewson. Matthewson. Brackets, comedians. Brackets, Fred Award winners. <laughs> <laughs> Brackets, both on Invisalign. Both on Invisalign, <laughs> actually before the podcast. We, both we had a cup of coffee and we both took them out. Simultaneously. And I think we are running a risk of swapping. I reckon. And, and, and when I, that happens, that's, that is worse in my mind than me eating at your house. <laughs> Yeah, because to me, the most disgusting thing you can ever do is use, use someone else's toothbrush. toothbrush. If, do you use your partner's toothbrush? Yeah. yeah. I use it occasionally, a but even, even then I'm like, oh, though. this feels weird. But at my last flat, we got a new flatmate who moved in with the exact same like Oral-B um, yep. $120 toothbrush as me. And first night she was there, picked up her toothbrush, did my whole <laughs> teeth. I was like, this one feels slightly different. I used Lana Waltz's... Um, toothbrush shout out in wellington awesome and she was like do you know where my toothbrush is and I'm like i think i've got it and then we were just like we didn't speak more on it but yeah. it was like he's used it was it an oral b it was like a, a manual it was a manual so you got to check the got whole manual. thing out if she's you actually wanna... got a manual yeah awesome for her um so this, this little sideline is... <laughs> chat actually um and <laughs> we're actually gonna talk about drag race which finished and uh and, and we... what a journey and actually how many episodes eight, eight. but honestly felt like 20. It felt long, yeah. It was a big journey. We And honestly, this, it was your classic drag race sort of cyclone. You yeah. had someone come back. You had some scandals. You had some wins. You had some losses. You, you had, had some, some tears. You had some tears. You had some episodes to be like, what the hell? You had some episodes to be like, yes, yes, yes. You had some fierce lip syncs where people fought their yeah. way to stay in the I comp. would say, and I'm going to say it, better lip syncs than American Drag Race the previous season. Yeah. And I will I will go out on that limb and say that. Wow. I felt like some of those lip syncs were even better than like the final lip sync with Simone and, and, can, and, and Candy can, Muse. Candy Muse, yeah. Where, you remember when she was in the gold and then she like pulled the, the string? Weird the weird hair things come out? Weird, the and we, when we watched it, we were like, those are meant to spin, aren't they? That's and they what I thought. Spun, and then we kind of looked it up and I think that was just it. They were just, <laughs> it was just a couple of spaghetti. Whereas I would out. say Maxi Shields pulling a microphone out of her sleeve. That was, was a stunt. A stunt and like yeah. and satisfying. Yeah. And amazing lip syncs in this final episode. Uh, yes, I'm just going to say, the be- the best stunt of the season was in tonight's lip sync. And I we only got like a slither of it. We got yes. actually one quarter of it. Yeah. But it still permeated through. Mm. So, so, what happens in this episode? Electra's gone home. It's all, Kita's the last Kiwi standing. There's a bit of, you know, everyone's like, I should win, I should win, I should win. Classic. Classic stuff. And um, I, who are you rooting for? Kita. We are all rooting for Kita, man. I'm rooting for Kita. And, and we I should would co- say, looking on the internet, the whole, whole world, world was rooting for Kita. <laughs> and let's, so every episode that we film of this podcast, film it, record we it. We do film it, um, and we edit it, and on we put it out as a motion so we picture. watch it for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we talk to the producers, because we get to talk to the eliminated queen. And this yes. episode, it was like, well, you will get to talk to the crowned queen. And Eli and I were like, well, let's put our money on it. Yeah. And they're like, so do you want to Zoom? With them, or uh, like we could get you Kita in studio just to talk about her journey, yeah, and then we could put you on a Zoom with the winner. And we yeah. were like, yeah, we'll talk to Kita in studio. No, and, and actually, don't worry about the Zoom. Yeah, we were like, <laughs> we, yeah, we'll just talk to Kita. We just we're, want to know about her we're journey. Putting all our money on Kita results. winning, and it, 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 and it came paid through. Off. And we put a lot of money on it at the pokies. No, I did see Miss Gina put some money did on the you? pokies and made um, 160 bucks. I think. <laughs> 
<laughs> so good because the pokies had had art on like 1.25 and Keita Wait, where on is four. this happening? At like the TAB? Yeah. I think. You can bet on anything. anything. God, we should have bet on that. I know. God, I want to get into gambling, but I purely want to gamble only on drag queens. I was at, I did a gig at the Queenstown Casino the other night, and I got out $40 cash to take to, to go and do some gambling, and then I chickened out and put it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> got too scared. Uh, um, so They've um, got to write a song, a verse. A verse. Another song, actually, because we've already had one this season, but it's time. For, we've actually had two ver- versions of the same song. Yes. Uh, and then we get to now, um, yeah, we, it's uh, You're a Winner, Baby. You know, when that baby, there's, an iconic track, and actually a... the Australian version of the song now, the yeah. Australasian. Sorry, um, and Michelle is actually addicted addicted to saying um, Australasia. Australasian. Um, it's. I feel like someone told her that word <laughs> as soon as she landed, and she was like, "Okay, use that." Use that a lot, which is because I don't feel like we use it very much. No, and I'm just like, just say that you're in New Zealand, and yeah. that the bulk of your cast is Australian. It's totally fine. Yeah. So. I was just going to deliver a hot take, which is like, because it's, I don't, I don't know. We could, we could recap the episode. Yeah. But I just feel like, let's just get into our hot takes of this whole season. You know what okay, I mean? for sure. And then we're right. going to be met in studio by the winning queen. Kita Moon. I think the New Zealand queens made the season. I think so too. You have, you have the a, winner. The winner. You have the story. Yes. And you have the heart. The heart. And like, I think you got the robbed queen. I think people were really queen. shocked. It's like what all you need is the drama, but then even then yeah. Electra held that. Electra what had more the could huge you want? Drama. You have the whole season in those three Just queens. In those eight, Tell me queens. what. Tell me what did Australia bring? Yeah. Tell me what. They got some good looks, but some good look. you can't make a whole show off looks, baby. But did you crown those looks? No. Oh, no. Um That's my that's my feeling on it. I just felt like Next season, I want 50-50. Yeah, same. Because we can bring it. We can bring it. We can go toe-to-toe. And it, and it will make the show better. I because think so, too. Because those, those rivalries will be more it's intense. It's clearly existed. And I'm like, this is the flavor of Down Under. So yeah. lean into the fact that there is a rivalry between Aus- um, Australia and New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And it might not be like... Even if they're like, we don't want to play into the rivalry. Like, that will be the story for that season. But it's so undeniably there. And because it felt like they wanted to stir up some storylines between Keita, Aneta, and Electra because of their working relationship. And they just didn't take the bait. No. But I loved watching Electra and Keita um, scheme at getting the Aussies out. Yeah, fun. But I just wanted more that. of that. And I'm like, if we have more New Zealand queens, mm. and it's a battle between whether Australia or New Zealand get the crown, yeah. I'm there for that. Cause I, I would love that. Because I don't get the cricket one. <laughs> you know, I don't get it. I don't know. I don't know who's got the ashes or whatever it is. But if someone brought some sandpaper out in the drag race. <laughs> yes. And, you know, did whatever they did in the cricket with the sandpaper. Yes, and an underarm. An underarm uh, bowl. Eyelash. Yeah. You know, an under- oh, an underarm uh, eyelash. An I love under- that. <laughs> you know, something like that. Yeah, very um, cool. So we get to hear all their verses in this song that they've written. Who do you think delivered the best verse? Honestly, pretty close between Art and Keita to me. Yeah. The first half of the song, infinitely better than the second half. Yes. Art, I was really surprised by, and I was like, oh, she's so much better here than she was in the girl band. And then I thought back and I was like, oh, that's the one episode she wasn't in. Right, interesting. And Her what, lyrics were packed. Packed with rhymes and really like uniquely Aussie, which is not a flavor that we've yeah. had with the previous songs. Keita uh, sings. And. Oh. Gorgeous. For me, it was like oh, a breath of fresh air to hear like someone sing, and it it, it still kind of sounded like Rue was. That's what I singing. thought. Like, yeah, it was kind of, very Rue Rue vibe. The song kind of started, and then suddenly you're like, oh gosh, I forgot Keita's singing. Yeah, and I was like, yes, that's so cool to kind of integrate your voice so well into the 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 song. Gorgeous voice, gorgeous, gorgeous. And voice. I feel like we'll be hearing more from her I singing agree. voice as well. And then and then it kind of yeah your, your art is like half. your classic kind of. Yeah. Drag rap, which is like, here, yeah, right? You know, but it was still very. But she didn't really do your whole, like, I'm coming for the crown, I want to win. It was like, shrimp on the Barbie. Oh, <laughs> oh <my> Sheila. <laughs> I was into that. And then we've got um, a verse from Karen, Karen from Finance, Finance, which I'm going to, I'm going to say, and I'm sorry, <laughs> oh, Karen. God, God. It truly sucked. <laughs> it was an abomination. <laughs> it was. I, re- you know, I really wanted it to be good. I'm rooting for. I was rooting for her. I, I was, was rooting for. I've been hard well. on Karen this whole time, but I was like, 
You still wanted to, you still want everyone to do well. <sighs> and she looks gorgeous. But it was very much like we are like it wasn't even all rhyming. It was <laughs> no, just like, was no well, rhymes. here we are, girl. We're all winners. You're my colleagues because I work in an office, but I'm still on drag race. But there was no it was like, well, here we are. It feels so good. To be on top. Like, it was yeah. a, this sort of weird... It was like a sentence. I was watching it again this morning while I had breakfast, and in the build-up, she said, I've written two verses and I'm choosing between. I'm like, well, I'd love to hear the other one. <laughs> also, I think, here's my thing. Here's my hot take on Karen, looking back at the whole season. I reckon she could have gone so hard as Karen from finance and just everything ignored the competition. So yes. if this verse was nothing to do with winning the competition and was all to do with filing taxes, yes. doing accounts, in the same way that like Katya's verses just yes. are like nothing to do with anything, we she, could have really grown to love the character. She has it in her. Yeah. That's the thing. And that's yeah. the frustrating thing. You can see it in her. Like, it's the person who misses her mark when she walks into the studio. So funny. It's the person who weirdly dabs before she's up for elimination. Oh, yes. I'm like, there is some Comes part of you... Comes up with the concepts for those crazy looks. looks the like, shark. There's some part of you that has a wicked sense of humour, that knows how to twist it, knows mm. how to, like, kind of undermine, the, like, the really serious moments of the show. But then the, there's a greater part of her that wants to be, like, head prefect... Follow please the rules. All, and yeah, please all. so polished. And that part is so dry. Yeah, get rid of her. Kick her out. Yeah. And I reckon she I reckon she'll be back for an all stars. So I'm yeah. like, if you come back for an all stars, Karen, and I'm speaking directly to you because I bet you <laughs> listen to this New Zealand <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Just give us Karen from Finance. And yeah, ignore we know everything it's there. else. Yeah. Ignore everything else. And then Scarlett's one was like, Crown, crown. I want the crown. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, no pants on. Give me the crown. Yeah. Totally. The classic. Um and I, then, I'll just and um as soon as someone says the word crown in their verse, I'm like, five demerit points. <laughs> <laughs> Um, out of there. And then there's obviously like there's like two or three therapy sessions in this episode. And I <sighs> am I feeling on all of this sometimes is I'm like, I know Rue's inspiring. I don't know if she's like a qualified therapist. Yes. <laughs> At one point in the in the episode, Michelle said, No, I'm not qualified to say this, but you need to. <laughs> it's like, no, so, it's so, so American to be like, I think what's missing here is self love. And, yeah. You know, just like they just make a guess and they're like, talk to me about your childhood. Well, and I, I don't know if this happens all the time, but Rue was really leaping in. With Karen, she was like, your mum died when you were 14. <laughs> <laughs> and she didn't lead her in to give her the information. She just had it at I hand. mean, I imagine they're like longer conversations, but maybe they're not. Yeah. But they just rip right into the core. And like, weird, it's so, it must be so perplexing for like, you're watching ketamine, like give yourself a hug and like sob. <laughs> it's like, it's heartbreaking it's stuff. Heartbreaking and you're stuff. like, I don't know whether this should be happening. Like, <laughs> it's sort of surreal. It is wild. And, and then, then they get, to, and they do it again later on where they talk to their former selves, those photos of their childhood photos. And, and while they're putting on makeup, they're all talking about Scarlet and Art's um, relationships with their dads and stuff. It's full, full on. on. But, I mean, I, I, I prefer the conversation around the makeup room because it, it feels more authentic. Yes. They're kind of talking about their experiences with their family. It feels inspiring because it, it feels like it's really coming authentically from the queens. But when yeah. it's Rube kind of hunting for their biggest traumas, and just to kind of be like, cool, now do you want a Jaffa? Like, it's... I know. And that's the most about trauma, trauma, trauma. And now you have to have a gag for the Jaffas at the end. <laughs> <laughs> they all have one. And yeah. I really felt like they were like, I'm going to not take one. You know, yes. like, but then they all... Didn't kind of take one. Except the key today. And that was a sign. And that was the winning moment. Actually, if you want to win Drag Race... Take the take Jaffas. Take the Jaffa. Take those Jaffas. I also love that it's like a... It's... Jaffas are kind of kitschy New Zealand definitely not Australian but they're more yeah. specifically like related to Auckland in the sense of just, just another, another fucking, fucking Auckland. Aucklander you know what would have been unreal if he had Snifters and then like oh, the fans Twitter where did Brooke get Snifters <laughs> <laughs> launch Snifters are out <laughs> yeah um, okay should we talk about the looks yes okay Kita an angel uh, an angel kind of giving us it's a, a little bit of a reference to the Courtney Act um, wings yes but a bit more camp but I preferred this reveal because there's something Same. about the Courtney Act angel wings it was like whoop, you know it's like One she's go. about to fly off whereas Kitty gives you this sort of slow rise you got to see it all very dramatic thing. and yeah. then there's a little bit of humour as she kind of brings herself in to walk through the door yes the, I the like end. that and I love that and I liked the actual wings themselves to me yeah they were, they were beautiful it was a beautiful look yeah we have art in this sort of blue ball gone gown. with the wind kind it's of thing it's gorgeous it's However, stunning I, th- I feel like it felt a little um, I wanted like there's all this volume 
Yeah. But like it's empty on the inside. Do you know what I mean? Like oh, I wanted yeah. like layers on the, I wanted like petticoats and things. Like it, it felt a bit like, but then you're only allowed like X amount of bag, baggage. So. She's pa- she posted a video of her whole team rhinestoning that at 3 a.m. and her flight was at 8 a.m. or something. Oh no. It's, yeah, it's wild. Amazing. I mean, she looked gorgeous. Yeah. And then we've got Karen. Karen and this kind of like glow up of her office look, I guess. Yes. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. For me. I think when I first saw it, I thought no. And then in retrospect, I thought it is maybe beautifully. Yes. It's like beautifully detailed. I think the silhouette or the trick that it's trying to give you like isn't completely clear. Mm. She's a little bit like um I feel like she could draw more inspiration from like your Nina Wests. Yeah. You know like how Nina had that gorgeous like there was a look that she had, like it was like a gorgeous dress at the front, and then you turn around, and there was like, a sheer naked look at the oh, back. Oh yes, yeah. It was like her runway look at the one her finale, and it was like it was stunning, and it was just like a bit. It was like obviously Cheeky. camp, and like the joke was so clear. Right? So yeah. I sometimes I feel like with um, Karen's joke, it's not obvious, fully obvious. Yes, true. Um, and we've seen a certain look from her before, which is kind of eighties office chic, sort yeah. of like a classic office look done ballroom quite a few times now. That's true. That's true. Um, Scarlett's got a nice pretty dress. I thought her outfit last week was a bit, it would have been a better finale outfit. That's what I thought too. Yeah, I thought the hair was gorge. She does a crazy thing with her lip Mm. that it like comes out like a, I've noticed it since she did her makeover where it's like a square lip, top lip. Oh, yes, no, I have noticed that as well. I don't know what it's trying to give and I don't know if I, it, it, it makes you very harsh. Yeah. But anyway, that's just I was like, I always kind of look at her lip being like I, I mean who am I to say how I she, noticed that this she shouldn't paint her face, but it just sort of makes her so harsh and it's so obvious when she's in like a when she's like in chaps on a pole, you're like, Yeah, yeah of course. But then when you're like in this sort of soft look. You want a softer lip? You I don't know, I just feel like it wants to sort of soften up a bit. Yeah. But she's not a very soft person. Yeah. <laughs> like she's quite She's harsh. Harsh. <laughs> and she's sort of very representative of like a very competitive Australian yeah. drag. She's got dance competition vibes. Yes. And then... Um, they all talk to themselves. They all talk to themselves. The the number itself, I feel like... Oh, 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 oh. i got to talk. Yes. Are you, we going to talk about Olivia Newton-John earlier in the episode? Well, let's just talk about all the um, sort of, yeah, cameos this season. Yeah. Because it's... I don't know if it necessarily paid off. No, they were so short. I mean, Auntie Donna was probably the worst one because I just think most of the the viewers didn't know that they were. (laughs) But they're clearly not there. Like, they're like these pre-recorded videos. What was wild to me about this Olivia Newton-John one was when they said, we've been watching every episode and we're loving it. But we know that they filmed it in January. (laughs) Were they sending the rushes to Olivia Newton-John's house? Quickly, quickly, quickly. We need to get to Olivia. For a 30-second video (laughs) at the end. (laughs) And this, um, and we're obviously capable of having people in the studio. Mm. So I was like, I just felt like if you're gonna do guests, like just get the best get New Zealand guests, guests we've got. Although my tea is, I think Lucy Lawless was meant to be there at some point and pulled out last minute. Wow, I don't know if I'm allowed to share uh, that, but <laughs> we'll give space around in case we need to cut it. And we've got Lance Savali and Elvis. Um, Lance is a freaking star he's a star and so is Alvis I'm a little bit sad that they cut some of like Alvis mm. out because the two of them are, are like iconic together and Alvis is such a good dancer so, I mean so is Lance and but he it's just very fun to watch them all just be so thirsty they're just and, frothing and he's a gorgeous boy he's a gorgeous, yeah, boy. gorgeous boy and he's sort of and they're all sort of they seem very capable of the choreography it doesn't seem like Scarlett does the, I think the right thing which is like I could do the splits if you would like. You yes. know, like, just like yeah. add the stuff that you can add. Like now is the moment. Pop it right in the end. Do you know what? I reckon if Electra was in that in that final number, she would have stormed it. I reckon Don't as well. Don't you reckon? Absolutely. <laughs> it's crazy. Especially like from the feedback from the first time she had it. Yeah. Like she would have been able to really know what she had to give. I <sighs> think of that if she had a couple of thousand dollars worth of dresses mm. or whatever. She, could, she would have won it. She could have won it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, Nikita would have won it. Nikita would always have taken it out. Yeah, but... Nikita's got a very unique sense of drag identity. You really know oh, who Nikita is. Yes, and she's an amazing dancer, Shall we I just think. blow her up um, for the next wee while before... before as we wait for her to get here. I think when she... Here. The way she moves on stage is, like, bewitching to me because it is camp, precise, gorgeous, yes. weird, all at once. She's a very unique type of... 
performer and drag queen in the sense that she is giving us... I mean, we really haven't had a camp winner ah. of, dra- of a drag race franchise... In a really long time um, slash ever. Ever. I don't think I can think of anyone. Be- I mean, I, I was thinking like... Bianca. Trixie. Trixie? Yeah. yeah 100%. On, on par with that. Like, she's not giving you, like, woman. She's giving no. you, like, drag, drag queen. queen. And she's there's sort of like something sort of psychedelic clown part to her the that's w- also... Like, just sort of incredible to watch. She's had an amazing evolution with her makeup as well. Yes. And that it kind of, it still looks, it's still in the same genre as it's always been. Yes. But it is just like more interesting colors, more yeah. precise, more refined. And I've seen her perform live a few times. I mean, famously, actually booked Kida and, <laughs> and I'll say it every episode, Kida and Electra. And Future Contestant, was Trinity Ice there And Trinity well? Ice was there. Yeah. She'll have to be on next she season. She season two. For my 30th birthday. Yeah. Yeah, that was the... Lo- it was a drag Amazing. show, and that was the talent on offer. And that and the scouts were there. And that's, that's how they booked the show. <laughs> 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 and Kita, like, you, she can perform live. Like, that... Yeah. She is... She's got it. She just goes. She man. goes, yeah. And I was like... And I felt like... We saw, like, in maybe the first song, we saw a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But, like, some of the Corey and some of, like, the opportunities throughout the season she got didn't really, I think, showcase what she's also fully capable of. And if yeah. you go see her live, you're going to be blown away. I'm sad we didn't get to see more lip syncs from her. Yeah. Because we only got this finale one, which she destroyed. Oh, let's talk. Okay, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the final lip sync. So they. They do a final lip sync to Let's Get Physical. Which is so funny. I thought that that would give them Hopelessly Devoted to You, which would more suit the fact that they're all in, like, gowns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's such a great number, though. It's such a fun song. And you kind of like... It must be so weird to watch it four, four times, times in, a row. in a row. Like, I wonder what that's like for the yeah. judges. I think it would drive me... Betty. Betty. How so, long is the song? I'm going to look it up how many okay, minutes great. that song is. And so we kind of... So Electra, uh, sorry, Scarlet sort of just takes her clothes off and rides on the floor. It's kind of what you'd expect from her to do. Yeah, they and do then, like they do like it when she gets into the leotard. Art gives you kind of campy, um, but sort of a bit serious and real, and she's sort of feeling it. But it's also a bit like goofy. Karen, I can't remember what Karen did. I remember she did something funny at the start. I can't remember what it was. But and she then did Kita. Kita, oh my. God. Is the only one to kind of understand the pun of the song. Yeah. And pulls out a rubber glove to give a physical. physical like a doctor's physical. Oh my God. And it's genius. And she has a few gags with the glove. She's thought about it. And I was like, crown her then and right there. there. That was amazing. I'd love to know when she was in the order of like whether she went first. And we can ask. The, yeah. We can ask. Yeah. We're going to have her in we're studio. We're going to have her in studio. And I think we're actually about to welcome the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, Down Under, Kitty Kitty Mane! Just Let's just go, how are you feeling right now? I mean, you obviously must be so tired, but also, are you buzzing? Yeah, um, I'm yeah, totally buzzing. It, it doesn't feel real. Like, I just, like, um, I feel like I'm living, like, in a dream state of um, my wildest dreams. It must be a lot oh, so to process much. in terms of, it's a very weird way to, like, win something. Like, yeah. to film something so far back. Yeah. Then to be like, I think I may have won that, but not yeah. to be sure. Not to know. Because we all listen, know that if they, listeners don't know, they film they filmed all four winning, right? Yeah. It's like it's a like common drag race like knowledge <sighs> that they always film all the winners and they film them all win. So you might have your instinct that you might have won, but then there's like you watch it all play out, and then you don't know until you watch it back, and then it's like, and then you. Does it feel, it, how does, what is that yeah, feeling? It's, it's bizarre because, okay, so when I was filming the whole thing, I was like not confident with what I was doing. And uh, like I was really bumming out about it. I was like, you know, I know like I'm stupid. I'm just like the class clown. But then like it felt like at that moment I was just like super in my head and I just wasn't giving it what I know I could give it. So I was down on myself, right? The Kenan, whole time. No! That's outrageous. Yeah, it was like, it was very that. Like every day was like quite heavy. Um, and it, but it would only it, like screw me up more, you know. Yes. Mm-hmm. And like it's so hard to get out of that spiral. So when when everything's said and done, um, I was 
when I left the whole thing, I was confident of the job I did on the last episode. I, I, I felt really good about that, like the look on the runway and the challenge and everything. So I was happy with that. Um, but I, I, I truly didn't think it was mine to win. And then in the lead up to the last episode, the support was outrageous, like outrageous. I could never have dreamed like to have that many people rooting for me. So then I started to think like, maybe I'm gonna win this. <laughs> thing. You know, like maybe maybe I am gonna win this fucking. Can I swear? You can swear. Oh, yeah, okay. I swear. <laughs> I can't imagine because I was like addicted to checking online to just how many people were sharing Team Ketamine and stuff all around the world. You were like destroying crazy it's right so cool. like to a point that it was like ridiculous like my sister would send me these like screenshots of polls and it was sort of like like the four of our names are there and it's like four percent for one like four percent for another and there's like 70 percent for me i'm like what the heck it was nuts like but just nuts. I even because i'm addicted to watching the reactions of the winners oh my gosh, and the best video. But there was like no like because you're obviously in new zealand everyone else is in sydney and I was watching the video of the Queens react to you win, and they all seemed like so grateful and like so happy, and like it was so deserving. Like I felt like everyone was like, "This is she's done it." Like, well, yeah. I just felt like it was a no brainer. Yeah, you really well, earned it. And mm. we were also saying before, like, I don't think there's been a winner like you in the drag race in the history, like franchise, yeah. like globally. You know, like you're a you're a real drag artist. Oh God! <laughs> you bring, like, <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> no, but, like, you just you give it all. Like there's like glamour. Uh, you're beautiful, but you're also like camp and weird and you're at the same piece. time. Like, look at you. Everything. You're like, oh, thank you. You're not afraid to like really go there and like turn up the like the color in you. You know, like mm. it's like so amazing. And I, I felt like we really got to see that in the um in the episode. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I felt like that too. Like um, it's weird because usually in drag it's like this this grand mask, right? And like I kind of like get to like hide a lot of like who I am at my core and I just get to be like a silly clown. But then it's like it's it's not that on Drag Race. I still look like the silly clown but it's like you're seeing like 100% who I am underneath all of that. So that was this weird you're like right. juxtaposition. Very true. It is like, mm. it's interesting like what pulls people to get into drag. Mm. And I always find that interesting. It's, I think now you, you feel a lot of people getting into drag because they could do drag race. <laughs> and right. Like yeah. A star. But then I'm like, I'm always curious by like the ones that got into it kind of before the franchise was really massive and you're one of those queens. I feel right. like it's always just sort of been pulled to drag. And I'm like, yeah, it's interesting like what individuals are drawn to it. And it's like, mm. yeah, it is that thing about like the mask and be able to kind of put something on and be kind of larger than life. But drag race requires you to like have to take that mask off and like show yeah. and bear your soul in a way that's like really vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, and and it's something that like you're not you, you're you're there because um, you know s seemingly you're a quality drag queen, so that's how you get the opportunity to be on the show, right? Mm. But then all of a sudden, it's like they they don't like. It's like they want something different from you. They almost mm. want something out of you that's not the reason you got on the show. You know, totally. like they don't want you to be like the, they still want you to be a great drag queen and mm. do all of that good stuff. But they also want to see, you know, the other side of it, which is like at that point, like none of us had showed those credentials in our career because no one ever mm. sees that side of us. It was interesting, like having seen House of Drag where you are only in drag just as the host and then getting to see both sides of you. Yeah. And the um, the confessionals, which by the way, what an amazing confessional look. The best yeah. confessional, <laughs> yeah. confessional Thank look. you, yes. How did you find doing that process, unpacking the day? Yeah. Yourself? That was, um, I actually found that really hard because like um, I, I live in the moment. Like I'm just like all about energy and um, when you kind of have to like you have to talk as if like it's happening right because obviously mm. they're cutting it into the episode but it's like kind of the next day and like I find it, I find it very hard to sort of like fake energy fake emotion you know like <laughs> yeah. and they're like okay but like imagine you're in the moment I'm like yeah but, but surely but you faked it yeah. it's some terrible dream <laughs> <laughs> you're in Timaru you're bullshit. like no I can't be bothered <laughs> <laughs> I can fake it <laughs> no do you know completely honestly like I love doing drag so much yeah, like literally that, like yeah. I just love it so like any gig that I do like I just but absolutely that's what Rue's talking about eh, when she's like the glimmer in your eye it's like there's a yearning in you to like mm. put it on glitter it up 
and then like perform for people. And I feel like having booked you actually for my 30th birthday, um, yes. I've always seen that in you actually. <laughs> Chris has brought that up every yeah. episode of this podcast. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> that was <laughs> such a fun night. Like, yeah, such you a killed fun it. Night. You killed it. And like you brought it and it was like, there's a star there. Like there's someone who just like knows how to like be so professional and like what a deserving winner with the with the crown and what I feel like you're gonna do with it. What what is your like what do you have dreams about what you can do with this now? Um, far out. Like, uh, it's so hard to know, like in the world of COVID, right? Because like, you, <laughs> you you look at sort of um, what other winners of the franchise have done, and but the rules have kind of changed now. But um, I just want to keep like um, taking it as it comes, and mm. um, I really want to release music. I've actually got a song uh, that I've just Ooh. worked on, yeah, yes. and um, we even made a music video, oh. and I'm going to drop it tonight, at eight o'clock tonight. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Exclusive, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is really exciting. Oh. Is it su- is it sung or rapped? Because you've shown you it that. is sung, um, yeah. but it's probably an, again another side of me that people probably aren't expecting. It's it, it kind of throws back to my old uh, my roots when I was like growing up, which was very like kind of like goth, a little bit like gritty and like a bit more oh, rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. Did you both feel like a huge like emo? Phase. So I, I'm an old girl. So like emo came out as I was growing out of goth. So like, oh, yeah, emo wow. was sort of like, um, just after my time. Cause where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up in Howick. I went to Howick college. Yeah. Oh, but I'm like 35. So like, you know, so there's a bit of a, there was some, there's some strong gothy energy there. Oh yeah, for sure. Wow. Yeah. I love BD, that. Yeah. Big goth energy. Do you oh, yeah, reckon yeah. that was the like beginning of like drag for you? Like, oh, eyeliner a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. It was my way of, yeah. Um, being eccentric and expressing myself before I was, um, like openly queer. So, um, and then, and then, so then I came out of the closet and like found drag and I was like oh yeah I see you know can you tell me about your first time in drag yeah yeah um my very first time in drag well the first time like uh the very first time I did drag kind of like I like going to the club and like doing drag drag yeah um my uh, some friends of mine saw there was like a drag competition uh and it was being held I think it was like Galatos oh yeah um and they were like we should put you in drag and like go and do it I was like that sounds like fun let's go do it and we did it and it was just like advertised I think an express magazine or something and we got there and there was like no interest for the event and it had been like canned and I'm like in drag it was just it was just the most bizarre thing so um because at this point I'm not like really connected to the community like I um had come out to my friends but I had didn't really go to the clubs and everything and all my friends were like straight for the most part oh, wow. um so we went to family bar and um it just kind of i met a few people there and that's when someone asked what my name was and i didn't have a drag name at that <gasps> point um so i my cat like my, so my cat's name is ketamine um and <laughs> um so when and like i knew that was a pun so like when someone asked what my name was i didn't have one i freaked out and i just said like oh it's ketamine and then it stuck because i got a wow laugh. yeah wow amazing that you called your cat Ketamine, even though you weren't really on the gay scene. Yet. Yes, well, I thought it was ironic. I, I adopted it from the SPCA, and it's like a veterinary drug. And I thought it would just be oh, ironic, oh, you know? That's so yeah, cute. but so- like, like literally named after my own pussy now. So yeah, <laughs> so I'm proud do, of that. <laughs> do you feel that like that that part of you that like still like that was like that kind of gothy, like got into drag for the first time, walking around Galatos? Like, do you still feel that that same part of you when you get into drag now? Or yeah. is it like, are you like a different, is it kidding me like a different person? Yeah, well, I, I think I'm always uh, growing um, in myself. So I think um, it's the same thing. It, it's both at the same time. I'm definitely always a different person, but it's the exact same person that's just growing, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. And what if, oh, you go. Oh, I was just going to say. What was your favorite part of the show? Like, what what challenge were you looking forward to the most? Which challenge did you enjoy the most? Okay, so you don't get told what challenges you're going to be doing. It's literally a surprise. So there was, I couldn't, I wasn't really like necessarily looking forward to something. I was dreading Snatch Game, like dreading Snatch Game. Um, I knew that I was taking Doctor Seuss, and I knew that it was going to be like 
really hard to do. Um, but I was like, no, I think I can do it. And turns out I couldn't. You were in the top three by default, really. Yeah, know? by default, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because there's been a little bit of that. Like, even up to the final, people were kind of like, oh, well, I guess via process of elimination, no, 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 You killed it you every, every, uh, like every week. Thank and you. Reese brought it up in your critique at the end. It was like, every week you brought something completely completely new on the runway and you like had to kind of transformed into this new like silhouette or look or what like you never were like you never knew what ketamine was going to bring to the runway but you never yeah. panicked yeah You'd be like, it will be a great look it'll be completely polished it'll be something fun and new and you showed us so many different silhouettes as well like yeah it was really each look was really distinct from each other i really wanted to do that too like um like with the bogan thing like m- my brothers and sisters were like considered bogans you know and they wore like ripped pantera t-shirts and like <laughs> yeah. roll, like roll your own cigarettes and like you know tried to get people to buy booze for them outside the liquor store like that's what it was it was like um, listening to Nirvana and like that sort of shit. So like Bogan to me, that's what Bogan was. That's my understanding of it. So like you know, and then I wanted to give it like the ketamine flair and like which yeah. is full neon. So like I just I just navigated the entire competition just doing it what made sense to me. I didn't so much worry about like what will everyone else want to see and what you know I did it yeah. So I think that's why some of my runways were a bit like oh gosh okay like <laughs> unique but like you know I am unique. We yes, actually I'm all are right? if we. We, you know, allow ourselves to like, you know, like let ourselves be unique because we are, you know. What was your favorite runway look? My of what I was, I, I I loved the family resemblance challenge. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, you yeah. were killed. Yeah, yeah. Right? it was crazy and. The transformation that you did on him and the two of you together and the reveal. Yeah. It was perfection. I felt so proud of it. And like he like he loved it. All of you know, all, all of those boys had such a fun time. Like you could just see it that they were just really loving it. So that was a really cool day. Especially when it like it was really quite like heavy emotionally the, yes. the whole mm. competition. Because there's so much on the line, you know? Yeah. Um but at that in that moment it really kind of felt like that all sort of just like faded away for a short while and we were just all there um with these other cool queer people and like just showing them our love for drag and yeah it was that was a really awesome day can you talk us through the other night and like what it felt like to win and like what happens to a winner of drag race in those in those seconds yeah wait you were meant to be in sydney right yes and then you ended up staying in all yeah like last yeah. minute so like the day before that was like really kind of like um heartbreaking because I knew mm. I was going to Sydney and it was like this whole exciting event and I got to be with the other girls and then all of a sudden like the advice was like it's probably wise you don't go because you know if you can't come back like you'll be stuck there it'll be at your own expense <laughs> or, you know and I was like oh gosh um, you know at the end of the day I'm a drag queen there's <laughs> like you know there's not big budgets for uh, random hotel rooms that you weren't expecting <laughs> so <laughs> um, yeah so it, it was a bit heartbreaking but like um, all my friends pulled together and like we created this little event at my house so um um, yeah, it was it was a really cool night. I got way too drunk, so yes. there's probably some very <laughs> embarrassing footage of me um, in the clubs that night. But uh... honestly, the video of you in the crown popping champagne in your backyard is yeah. so iconic. I'm like, to me, that's the perfect way yeah. to celebrate. It's so yeah, nice. you got all your support network around you, and they just want to shower you in love. And so you're. You're watching it. Are you thinking, I think I've won this? Or are you like, who's to say? Oh, fuck. I, 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 as I, like, in the week leading up to it, I was starting to believe it. I yep. was like, I think maybe I've got this. So, yeah, I, I really was kind of like really hoping. But um, it, it, my mind like goes a million miles a minute yes. at the best mm. of times. And I was, it was just like, oh my God, I've got this. But it was always like, oh no, <laughs> but you, maybe you don't. And then all of a sudden, um, you know, I've got someone like in front of me filming me because they know the announcement doesn't happen. And I'm like, oh, they're probably filming to get my winner's reaction. And then I'm like, oh shit, but also they're filming, <laughs> maybe they're filming the fact that like, I'm about to be like That's devastated so and they, they want to spring my like true reaction like you know will she be gracious or will she be like looking like what the fuck yeah so and then wow. you win oh my gosh everyone's screaming yeah we see you kind of like break down a little bit like the shock of it all but yeah. also like I feel like when I watch it and like I'm like trying to understand it I'm like there's a sense of like I knew I had that yeah and then also like a relief of like 
it's mine now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was all of that at the same time. It was all also um, a bit like kind of like like uh, like numb. Like you, it didn't. It still doesn't truly like comprehend in my head. Like that. That's the reality. <laughs> Look, the crowd, yeah, right that, that's like you. sitting there. Like Amazing. what? Like there's the fierce drag jewels that they talk about. Like on every season of RuPaul's Drag Race, like sitting next to me. Like how are you going to sell it? Like you need to find a way. To make this real for yourself. Yeah. yeah. And what do you want? Like, what is the best way that you can celebrate this? Like, so I, I want to know, like, how do you, oh, how do you I celebrate don't, this? I don't have an answer to that. You know what? I'm just going to keep working hard. I really want to, um, like, continue. I'm so proud of myself, and I want to continue uh, to make myself proud, but also to make New Zealand proud and, like, make all my um, drag family proud and... You know, you have made New Zealand proud. My mum texted me about five times. <laughs> she was like, "Can't believe she did it so proud." <laughs> oh, that is so That's sweet. So Can you talk us through? We were talking about this before. The four single lip syncs. Yeah. How did it play out? What was the order? Oh right. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> There's so much stuff that they tell me you're not allowed to talk about oh, production true. wise. Um, It'll get cut later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so to save you. Yeah. Life. So um, the order for. Everything on that episode, I'm pretty sure, went uh, like left to right down the oh, down the thing, yeah. which actually was alphabetical order as well. So it was Art, Karen, myself, Scarlett. Oh, yeah. wow! Um, a lot, a lot of the show was alphabetical order. Even the announcement, uh, the workroom announcement when it came out, was all alphabetical this, order. This oh, smartest, okay. easiest way to do it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, because then it's like there's really no way you can kind of like argue anything. It's like no, you know, you all chose your names. Name. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was <laughs> Drag alphabetical order. It's like Aardvark. Zero 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 one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so will you um so you're obviously in New Zealand for a bit will you be going over to Australia soon or yeah, are you just waiting to um, hear? yeah I'm going to Brisbane uh in July um and then hopefully I've been asked to go back to Adelaide so I'm just working on uh finding cool. a date you're to gonna do be that. flying gonna be back everywhere. and forward and back and forward oh my gosh you know what I love more than anything in life is the Koru lounge oh, so yeah. I, am, I, I, I am ready for some more of that bubbles <laughs> what's your favorite yeah what's your favorite snack in the Koru lounge um well as, as, to be honest <laughs> Crazy it's been a, question I, I <laughs> like uh I feel like Koru has really kind of been disappointing me these days with oh, their uh, with their that. international options <laughs> So if you're listening to this Kuru Lounge, I feel like I'm over those Kranskis and terrible scrambled eggs. <laughs> uh, I've had it up to here. Yeah. Um, Give the girl some hash browns. Yeah, some come on. Yeah. Is that too much do. to ask? Yes. Honestly. And honestly, it would cost them nothing to spring for a little bit of like chicken salt yeah. on those hash browns. Like, come yes. on. They could really razzle dazzle. Absolutely. <laughs> but they refuse. You've got a crown now. I mean, you can be asking for these things. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I, I want like the crisps. I want I want the cassava <laughs> chips and the cookie going forward in New Zealand. And that's how she's going to celebrate the win. <laughs> yeah. Chips <laughs> and a cookie. <laughs> Kato, we're so proud of you. Oh, Honestly, such you. a deserving winner. Oh Look at gosh. you. You're, you're glowing. It's like you're pregnant or something. <laughs> it's like, and we just, I feel like not only are like the Kiwis proud, but I can sense that like the whole, the whole audience world is, is so satisfied because you really just smashed it. Oh, you well. should be so <laughs> proud of yourself. And Thank I hope you just you. get drunk every night this week. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so no, I, so I got drunk enough for a year on Saturday <laughs> night. So like, no. <laughs> How did the night end up? Like you in like a kebab shop somewhere, or genuinely, I do not remember it. Perfect. How since, great. Since, since my like gastric sleeve surgery, like alcohol hits me oh, really hard, yes. and I genuinely do not remember the last half of the night. <sighs> Apparently, I had an awkward altercation with somebody. Um, oh yeah. Wow. So, did you say I'm the winner of Drag Race? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was somebody that in my past had sort of like tried to stand in the way of my career, and apparently oh. I felt confident to be like, "Look at me now, bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> so Honestly, awkward. You deserve Great. that. Oh, I feel Thank bad. You so much I for to us. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Oh, on you go for another day of press. What time yes. do you finish tonight? Um, I'm not too sure. Oh my gosh, you'll be get, you're you're not going to get out of drag. You're stuck in that look. Oh, you know, absolutely. Hours. I'm not going to get out of drag until I have uh, done a couple of scrolls through Tinder, <laughs> like ordered ordered an extra room key waiting for me at reception. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, we've just finished chatting to Keita post her interview and we've got the hottest scoop. She's, what, what a star. Like, <laughs> what a legend. Just coming in so graceful, so kind, so sweet. And then tells us the story she leaves about the glove from the lipstick. From physical. She stole it from the, the first, first aid, aid kit. kit. And she came up with the idea like on the, on the fly. fly. She's I'm, just looking at it backstage. Oh, A drag Superstar. superstar. We are so happy oh. that the one, the crown is in New Zealand. Yes. We did actually get to touch it and it fe- felt cheap and expensive. Yes, both <laughs> at the same time. It felt like fierce drag jewels. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. And uh, we're so proud of Keita. And um, Eli, this has been an amazing journey. It's been a dream. Let, let's, let's look. I mean, I hope we get another season season of this show. We, we can, can do, do, do it more. all again. We can do, we it, can do it, all it all again. And, and I want Keita to win again. Yeah. <laughs> And if you actually just want to hear more of us, we've actually got our own podcast, The Male Gaze. So you could just switch over to that app. And we and we record a podcast every now and then. Every now and then. When we're, yeah. it's, it's this. It's this kind of banter. It's this kind of chat. If you like the stuff up the top. about the, <laughs> If you love the Invisalign, the Invisalign toothbrush banter, stuff, you're going to love It's a lot of that content. Yeah. Um, but keep listening to The Real Pod there. Also recapping all the other great NZ reality TV. Thank you to The Spinoff for having us. Thank you to Drag Race for making Drag Race. Thank you to Tina and Jonathan, our producers. To and Jane Yee. To Jane Yee. And thank Thank you to Ketamine. Yeah. The drug and the drag. Because we have been on Ketamine the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Kia ora queens. Kia ora queens. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Talo for Lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spin-Off. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spin-Off member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Kia ora, this is Toby Manhire, here to urge you to tune in to Gone by Lunchtime, a podcast with me, Annabelle Lee Mather and Ben Thomas, tackling the world of New Zealand politics, from policy to polling, from scandal to psychodrama. Listen to Gone by Lunchtime, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network, wherever good pods are sold. The Spin-Off Podcast Network.